next class we are going to discuss few more problems on differential equations uh, with uh, I'm, uh, with the bound with the boundary conditions now observe carefully here again i'm talking about uh, in this class also higher order higher order derivatives with constant coefficients it's a homogeneous equation here q of x is equal to 0 therefore this is what type of differential equation homogeneous differential equation we already discussed in the previous class uh, whenever q of x is 0 that uh, differential equation becomes homogeneous that uh, in that case the solution of the given differential equation is nothing but complementary function itself is a solution of the corresponding differential equation okay now observe carefully is all written the board solve d square x by dt square minus 4 into dx by dt plus 13 x equal to 0 with what are the boundary conditions they given x of 0 is equal to 0 means x at t is equal to 0 observe carefully here dependent variable is x x is dependent variable okay and then which one is the independent variable it is an independent variable yeah Purposefully, I change the variable here. Now, x of 0 means x at t is equal to 0 is 0. The derivative of x with respect to t at t is equal to 0 is 2. Means the meaning is x dash of 0 is equal to 2. Means the derivative of x with respect to t when t is equal to 0 is 2. Now, they are given two boundary values. Now, First, as usual, try to find out the your solve means find out the value of x in terms of t and, and also constant because t is an independent variable. What we are going to do? First, we have to take the given differential equation. Now, observe carefully the given differential equation is what type of differential equation is a homogeneous. Why? Because the right hand side 0 means q of x is q of not x q of t is equal to 0 here because what is the independent variable is so x independent variable is t therefore q of t is equal to 0 okay uh, dx by dt plus 13x must be equal to 0 don't confuse here y is x and x is t that's all what's the next step first you have to express this in terms of differential operator it's nothing but d square x minus 4 dx plus 13 uh, x equal to 0. Where what is my capital D differential operator is nothing but the derivative with respect to x. Derivative with respect to x. Okay. Not with respect to x, derivative with respect to t. Because independent variable is what actually t. What is capital D denotes derivative with respect to t. What is d square denotes second derivative with respect to t. Second derivative with respect to t. What's the next step? Now I have to keep dependent variable outside in the right side. Not for the left side. I told there is no meaning. Suppose you write it x first. 13 into x equal to 0. This is nothing but my, what is that actually? F of t. This is what? F of t. Okay. This is F of t. Now, what's the next step? I have to write the auxiliary equation. What's the, how to write the auxiliary equation? Auxiliary equation is replace d by m in F of t and then equal to 0. We get a polynomial. m square minus 3, 4m. 13 equal to 0. Now, it's a, it's a quadratic equation. You know how to factorize. But what is the thing? 13, a is 1, b is minus 4, c is 13. 13 into 1 is 13. We can't write 13. See, once you uh, multiply uh, this value, what you are expecting? 13. Either add or subtract the factor, what you are expecting? Minus 4. But 13, you can't write in product of any two number. You can't write except 13 into 1. Suppose you write 13 into 1. 13 ones are 13. Suppose add, we get 14. Suppose you subtract, we get 12. But uh, what, what do you want actually? Once you add or subtract by 
factor of two numbers, we are expecting minus 4 and then multiplied what is expecting 13. That factor I to take. But you can't write 13 is product of two factors except 13 into 1. But once you take 13 into 1, you don't get it minus 4, either add or subtract. Therefore, what we are going to do, I go for factorization formula. What is the ax square plus bx plus c must be equal to 0. What is the factor, uh, quadratic formula to find out the value of x is x is equal to minus b plus uh, minus root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Yeah. Using this formula, I have to find out the values of m. What is a? What is a here? a is equal to 1. B is equal to minus, this is a plus sign, therefore what is uh, B is minus 4 and then what is C is equal to 13. From this, uh, minus B, my, already be having minus 4, then minus into minus, what do we get? Plus 4. Plus R minus square root of B square, 16 minus 4 AC. 4 into A is 1 and C is 13. 13 fours are 52. divided by 2a. 2 into a is 1. Then I to simplify. Well, you know that how to simplify for this. Okay. Now I to simplify this. Okay. m equals 4 plus or minus. Uh, what we get actually? Root of minus 36 minus 52 plus 16, what do we get? minus 36 uh, divided by 2. Now this can also be written as 4 plus uh, minus, I was already explained in the previous class, minus 36 can be written as 36 into minus root 1. Well, minus root 1 is i, this is 6, 6i. Six Therefore, 6i divided by 4 divided by 2. Therefore, finally, we get one pair of complex root 2, 4 by 2 is 2 plus R minus 3 by 2 is 3 into I. This is a way, I, even the simple thing, you are a diploma student, therefore I am explaining uh, slowly each and every step, you please try to understand that. Now we get one pair of complex roots. It is a quadratic ex, uh, equation, how many roots are expecting? Uh, two roots. We get one pair of complex root. What is a complex root? Now I to write what is the alpha value? e power of 2 into t, independent variable is t of c1 into cos of 3t plus c2 into sin of 3t because beta value is 3. Okay, fine. In the, is the, what actually general, uh, is the, this is actually complementary function. First, I am going to write the complementary function. Okay, fine. This is complementary function. But here, particular integral is 0, since uh, which value is 0? Q of x is equal to 0. Therefore, now I have to write general solution. What is my general solution? Not y, general solution is dependent variable x is equal to cf plus pi. What is my uh, the cf is e power of 2t of c1 cos 3t plus c2 into sin of now, I have to take the number, uh, pi is 0, this cf itself is a general solution of the given problem. The problem noted over here, because in the in this problem, they given a boundary conditions also. What is the boundary condition? x is 0 or t is equal to 0. And also, first derivative of x with respect to t is 2 when, x is, when t is equal to 0. They given two boundary conditions. Now, whenever they provide the boundary condition means I have to find out the unknowns. What are the unknowns they involved here? C1 and C2. How many unknowns? You have two unknowns. Therefore, they given two boundary conditions. Now, for my convenient, what we have written the general solution, I have taken as star. I have to take first boundary condition. What is the first boundary condition here? The boundary uh, condition is nothing but uh, first is put is equal to, put t is equal to 0 in star. Yeah. Put t, 
e is equal to 0 means instead of x what you take x of 0 must be equal to e power of 0 what is e power of 0 1 c1 into cos 0 what is cos 0 value is 1 but what is sin 0 value is 0 once you put 0 cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0 you already know that the basic thing but you already they given in the problem x of 0 is equal to 0 that implies 0 is equal to c1 means the value of c1 we get automatically 0 and next I have to find out c2 how to find out c2 using second boundary condition what's the second boundary condition is nothing but actually x dash of 0 is equal to 2 means first derivative of x with respect to t when e is equal to 0 is 2 therefore if you want use this boundary condition and to differentiate this differentiate with respect to t on both sides yeah differentiate with respect to t on both sides Which one I am going to differentiate? Star. Star I have to differentiate uh, on both sides. We get what we get actually uh, dx by dt equals yeah you go for product. Well, what is derivative of e power of 2t? 2 into e power of 2t into second function c1 cos 3t plus c2 into sin 3t plus first function into derivative of the second function c1 into what is derivative of cos we get minus sin 2 3t into derivative of 3t with respect to t is 3 plus c2 into what is derivative of sin cos 3t into derivative of uh, 3t with respect to t is 3 into 1. Now you even though you know the product rule I am explaining how to proceed how to do it. And next, they given the value is dx by dt at what? t is equal to 0. This also denoted by x dash of 0. Yes, x dash means this also must be put x dash of 0. Now, I have to put t is 0. What happened? 2 into e power of 0 is 1. Cos 0 is what actually? 1. But sin 0 is 0. Okay. Plus, uh, e power of 2, e power of 0 is 1, okay fine, and then minus 3 into c1 into what is sin 0 is 0, 3 into c2 into cos 0 is 1, okay. What's the value they given here, x dash of 0 is 2, therefore 2 equals, actually they given uh, 2 equals, this is, uh, c1 is already known that c1 is 0, therefore this is 0, entire this term must be 0. Fine. This also 0 but 3c2. From that we get automatically what is c2? What is c2? 2 by 3. Keep in mind in the problem suppose they provide a boundary condition means what are the unknowns you have in the general solution I have to find out with the help of the boundary condition. Then finally once you find out the values of c1, c2 using boundary conditions, what we get a solution is called particular solution. Why they consider it a particular solution? Because based on the condition x of 0 is equal to 0, x dash of 0 is equal to 2, based on that condition, we are finding the uh, solution. That solution is nothing but particular solution because based on the constraint, we are get a solution. That solution is called particular solution. What's the solution we get? E equals, yeah, then c1 is 0, therefore, and then e power of 2t into, what is c2 is 2 by 3, therefore, 2 by 3 into sin 3t. This is the required, this is the required particular solution. Now, whenever they provide boundary solution, boundary conditions means they expecting what type of solution? Particular solution. Yeah, I think uh, everyone is clear this uh, problem. I am showing this entire problem and if, if possible in one screenshot, observe carefully, you try to understand this. How is, uh, I think, proceed. 
yeah i'm showing the entire problem in one screenshot what they given actually they given a, a differential equation what type of differential equation is homogeneous differential equation why is a homogeneous because q of x q of t is equal to 0 first you express in terms of the differential operator and next try to express in terms of the polynomial and then you write the auxiliary equation by replacing d by m and then you solve carefully we get one pair of complex roots and then you write the complementary function up to that you familiar but this is not expecting the general solution they expecting particular solution because they provide a boundary conditions in the problem now they provide the boundary condition in the problem therefore what we are going to do here with the help of these two boundary condition i to find out two unknowns in the general solution that give rise particular solution what i did put t is equal to 0 and then i to after once you get one unknown value the next step again i to take the general solution i to differentiate on both side with respect to t and then put t is equal to 0 they given x dash of 0 value from that from the x dash of 0 value then i to get c2 value c1 we get c2 we get two unknowns we are given two conditions that's enough what we get is a solution is nothing but it's a particular solution of the given so we i to find out the particular solution with the help of boundary condition in the given problem okay now we have to move to the next uh, problem yeah i'm going to take one more problem for using synthetic division method second uh, this class second problem okay solve we already written in the previous class itself they are not necessary to write us all four times of fourth derivative of y with respect to dot no, x minus d into 8 into third derivative of y with respect to x Minus seven into second derivative of y with respect to x plus eleven into first derivative of y with respect to x plus six y equal to zero. Yeah, I want to solve this problem. Now, what is the first step? First, I to express the given differential equation in terms of differential operator. Observe carefully. In this case, y is a dependent uh, variable. dependent variable okay variable uh, x is a independent variable independent variable now 4 into d power of 4y minus 8 into d cube y minus 7 into d square y plus 11 into dy Plus six equal six y equal to zero. Where, where? What is my capital D denotes the derivative with respect to x. Like that, d power of four means fourth derivative with respect to x. So, what's the next step? Now I have to keep y outside. Four d power of four minus eight d cube minus seven d square plus eleven d. Plus six into y equal to zero. Okay. Next, this is actually f of d. Replace d by m and then equal to zero in f of d. That is give rise of an auxiliary equation. What's the auxiliary equation? Four into m power of four minus eight into m cube minus seven into m square plus eleven into m plus six equal to zero. Now, once you write the auxiliary equation, that gives rise what actually? That is nothing but polynomial. It's a polynomial of degree four. Therefore, how many roots are expecting? Four roots. I told whenever having a polynomial degree more than two, by using synthetic division method, or if it possible, it is simplified directly also. Try to convert, try to reduce the given polynomial. It's not. It's a polynomial of degree. Once you reduce to polynomial degree, do you know how to factorize? How to apply quadratic formula? That's why we are doing that. How to reduce? 
if it possible do it uh, directly or go for synthetic division method in this problem is not possible to find out directly uh, to convert a polynomial degree to for what i'm going to do here one root i have to find out by using synthetic uh, by using inspection method means here i go for uh, which method synthetic division method if we want to go for synthetic division method first i have to find out one of the value by using the inspection method put m is equal to minus 1 once you put m is equal to minus 1 this is plus, only odd power become minus this is what happen minus into minus plus okay now this is minus now this is minus what we get actually minus 18 this become plus because m is equal to minus 1 we get uh, minus minus 8 12 uh, plus 6 18 here also becomes 18 is cancel we get 0 So put m is equal to minus one. What we get? Four into minus one to the power of four, minus eight into minus one whole two, minus seven into. Th this is you don't have any particular method. You only try and take the uh, different values of m for negative, for ne positive value. Then you have to for which value of m we get? LHS is equal to RHS. Then you treat it. Then one of, that is a one of the root of the given polynomial. That's the way I to do. Yeah, here right hand side zero. For what value of m we get zero? You choose that is a one of the root that we get from inspection method because we are doing try and error method. Now what we get four plus eight uh, because minus into minus plus eight. This is minus uh, 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 what about that uh, seven? Uh, now I have to observe carefully. Uh, once you uh, put uh, this uh, value. Now and I, I miss one term here. The term is actually uh, 11m. Okay, 11 into minus one and plus six equal to zero. Okay, fine. Yeah. Now we get uh, minus seven uh, minus 11 plus six. You add these two, we get zero is equal to zero. Therefore, m is equal to minus one is one of the root of the equation. Then using synthetic division method, I to reduce polynomial degree four to polynomial degree three. At that time, you can't reduce two power. It's possible only one power. Therefore, first you write what are the quotient you have degree four, uh, three, two, one, and constant term from the original equation four minus eight minus seven, and then I to go for eleven. And then six. Okay. What's the one of the root we calculated from by inspection method is minus one. What's the first step I told in the previous class? I to I put zero because we are reducing. You already know that one of the root. I have to take it that root uh, that factor outside means what's the remaining polynomial degree three. We are taking one factor outside means the remaining factor is three. Therefore, this is zero four four into minus one is minus four. What we get actually minus 12, minus 12 into minus 1 is 12 only. What we get actually 5, 5 into minus 1 is uh, minus 5. What we get 6, 6 minus 1 is minus 6. I told very clearly. Once you apply synthetic division method, always last value is zero. This is nothing but the quotient of d cube. This is quotient of d square. This is quotient of d. This is constant term. We are taking Why you are applying synthetic division method? You know one factor. You have to take it outside. Means you have to try to write the remaining. You have to take one linear factor from the polynomial degree four. What is the remaining polynomial degree? Three. Okay. Now what is the remaining polynomial? Is four m two minus twelve m square plus five m plus six equal to zero. Yeah. Again, it's a cubic polynomial. It's not possible to factorize. I told you reduce this polynomial until reach the polynomial degrees two. Therefore, what's the next step? What we are going to do here? Either you do it uh, directly or we can't do it directly. Suppose you take m square common, we get uh, three. Uh, you have to take uh, uh, what about four m square is common? What we get m minus the But here you can't write this is m minus t. If I can't do it uh, directly to convert cubic polynomial to quadratic form, therefore what we are going to do again I go for inspection method. 
therefore here what i'm going to do here put m is equal to 2 see i can't uh, you don't have uh, any method you start from you already taken minus 1 if, if you want to put uh, again minus 1 is not satisfied 1 0 1 and now i'm going to put m is equal to 2 once you put m is equal to 2 what happen 4 into 2 to uh, minus 12 into 2 square and then 5 into 2 Plus six equal to the already zero is there. Then two cube. Uh, what we get actually two cube. What is a uh, two cube is uh, eight eight four thirty two. Yes, thirty two minus this is twelve four is a forty eight. Ten ten plus six. What we get sixteen. See observe carefully forty eight minus forty eight. We get zero. Uh, forty eight minus forty eight. We get zero. Therefore. Now I have to choose m is equal to two is a one of the root. Therefore, m is equal to two is a is one of the is another root. We already written m is equal to minus one is one of the root. Yes. Okay. If you want to write m is equal to one is a, is one one of the root of axillary equation. of the axillary equation like that is an is a, another root of the axillary equation next i have to write the synthetic uh, synth i have to synthetic division method to find out the i have to convert cubic polynomial to quadratic form now i am going to take this Which uh, equation I took on a cubic? If I take that to cubic equation position, four m square is minus twelve, m is for position is five. Just keep in mind, most of the students are doing mistake here. While taking a question, suppose having any question having a negative sign, please take the negative sign along with that uh, position five. Okay. Next, what's a uh, in cubic equation? What's one of the root we calculated to? Yeah. Zero first type four four two is eight add we get minus four and then four two is minus uh, whatever eight what we get minus three three two is my minus six minus three two we get zero and four number of times always the last value must be zero this is nothing but m square equation this is m m equation this is constant therefore what's a, a quadratic form reduced form four m square Minus 4m uh, minus 3 equal to zero. Now I have to factorize. How to factorize? 4a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 4, and c is equal to minus 3. Then I have to multiply a into c. What is a into uh, a is equal to 4, right? A is equal to 4. A a into c means what? 4 into minus 3 means 12. Once you multiply Uh, what actually uh, any two factor value you are expecting minus 12 but add and subtract what you are expecting b value what's the b value b so keep in mind i have to convert into two factor that factor multiply that what you are expecting ac value what's ac value minus 12 add or subtract what's the value you are expecting b value what's the b value four for so what are the factors you can't take this 4 into uh, minus 3 we get minus 12 fine but add these two we get 1 but add or subtract what you are expecting um, 4 therefore what are the factor i am going to take 6 2 well no 12 have so many possibility minus 12 minus 6 and plus 2 add these two we get uh, minus 4 multiply these two we get minus 12 see once we get the factor you not necessary to take same factor Observe carefully. AC. Once you take any two factor that give rise AC value, add or subtract that must be required which value B value. Therefore, what I'm going to take in minus 12 can also be written as 6 into 2. I'm going to take minus sign for 6 because 6 is greater than 2. Then once you add, we get minus 4 and multiplied we get minus 12. It's satisfied. Therefore, these are the factor. Therefore, this can be written as 4m square minus 6m plus 2m. Yeah, these are the factor we have to take. This is minus sign. This is plus minus three equal to zero. Group these two, take common factor. 
uh, what is a common factor? 2m is a common factor. What we get actually? Uh, 2m minus 3. Here 1 is a common factor. 2m minus 3 equal to 0. That implies again from these two what is a common factor? 2m minus 3. Once you take 2m minus 3, what is the remaining? 2m plus 1. Observe carefully, you are a diploma student, that's why even though simple thing I am explaining to you are how to factorize. Group these two, take common factor, group these two, take common factor. Again, take common factor from these two. Uh, what are the factors you are expecting? 2m minus 3 equal to 0 and then 2m plus 1 is equal to 0. That implies what is my m? 3 by 2. What is my m here? Minus r. No, uh, totally we get four uh, roots. What are the four roots we get? You get no? Beginning m is equal to minus 1, m is equal to 2, m is equal to 3 by 2, and also m is equal to minus half. How many roots are expecting? 4, because it's a polynomial degree, 4. Yeah, but all the roots are real and distinct. My aim is how to apply synthetic division method. That's why I'm explaining here. All roots are real and distinct from the case A, what we discussed in the first class, based on that we are going to write complementary function. What is complementary function? C1 to e power of m1 minus x, independent variable is x, plus c2 to e power of 2x, plus c3 into e power of 3 by 2 into x, plus c4 into e power of minus r x by 2, means half into x. Fine. Now, and also q, uh, pi equal to uh, 0 since uh, q of x is equal to 0. Therefore, what is my general solution? Therefore, general solution is dependent variable is y is equal to cf plus pi. But cf itself is a general solution. Suppose the given equation is a homogeneous c1 into e power of minus x plus c2 into e power of 2x plus c3 into e power of 3 by 2 into x plus c4 into e power of minus x by 2 is the required ds. ds means general solution. I think it's clear how to apply uh, you uh, whatever synthetic division method. Here we apply twice. This problem they given. What are the problem I am discussing from the right from the beginning from the my class from the second class onwards. All the problems they given in the question paper. Keep in mind. These problems they given in the question paper. I am showing entire problem on screenshot. First you are x plus in terms of differential operator and take y keep it in right side always. Don't write uh, left side. There is no meaning. And then you write a polynomial, write an auxiliary equation to write, replace d by m in f of d. And then uh, here polynomial degree 4, you can't uh, find out, the, can't factorize directly using any direct method. Therefore, I go for synthetic division method. Therefore, first you find out one of the uh, root by using uh, inspection method. Using that, you have to convert polynomial degree 4 to polynomial degree 3. Again, it's a polynomial degree. I can't factorize. Therefore, I can't factorize. Or I can't apply quadratic formula. Again, I do search another one uh, root by using say, uh, uh, inspection method. With the help of that, I'll reduce polynomial degree 3 to polynomial degree 2. Once you reduce to polynomial degree 2, then uh, this uh, quadratic equation is possible to factorize. I explain how to factorize also. Yeah, once you multiplied, we are expecting AC value. Once you add or subtract, we are expecting B value. That's the way I took choose the two factors and simplify. Finally, we get four roots. All four roots are real and distinct. This is the way I to find out the roots and then I to write the general solution of the given problem. Before I'm going to wind up, I'm going to take another one uh, problem. Uh, that is also, I'm, I'm, so many problems are there. I'm going to share my e-content notes. You go through that. All problems are definitely they given in the and use um, maybe I'm refer some 20 years uh, diploma question paper based on that I collect I solved uh, in uh, my content notes. Okay. Before I'm going to wind up that I'm going to take another last problem. Uh, it's not very difficult problem. Yeah. 
Then the third problem for this class, d power of solve. Solve. d power of 4 minus 5d square plus 4 into y equal to 0. They given already in terms of the differential operator. I told in the previous class, already mentioned in the differential operator, free to take independent variable, your choice. Either you take independent variable, A, X, or T, other than Y. They mention already Y means Y is a dependent variable. Therefore, I am going to take what's a given. What's a given actually? D power of 4, 5D square plus 4 into Y equal to 0. Now, my uh, convenient, I choose D is equal to derivative, your first derivative with respect to X. Okay. Now, we have to write direct auxiliary equation. What's the auxiliary equation here? m to the power of 4 minus m, 5m square plus 4 equal to 0. Yeah, what I'm going to do here, see, I, why I'm taking this problem? Even though it's a polynomial degree 4, it's possible to factorize. Why I'm go for factorization method? Because here you have m, m power of 4 can be written as m square, m square whole square minus 5 m square plus 4 equal to 0. This is just like a a x square plus b x plus c. But the thing is, instead of x, what we have here, it's uh, m square. Yeah, x is equal to m square means m to the power of 4. B, this is uh, once you put x is equal to m square, what we get actually? a to m power of 4 plus b into uh, m square plus c. That's all. Four. What I'm going to do here, not necessary to go for uh, synthetic division method, even though it's a polynomial degree 4. Why? Because here have even powers, m power of 4, m power m square. Now what I'm going to do here, put x is equal to m square. It's look like a, power, a into m power of 4 plus b into m square plus c, just like a quadratic. It's possible to go for quadratic, but keep in mind what is my x is m square. That's all. Therefore, what is my a value? a is 1, uh, b is minus 5, and c is equal to 4. Means multiply, uh, multiply a, c, what we are expecting, 4. Add and subtract what we are expecting, 5. Therefore, what are the factors I am going to take? 4 into uh, 1. Yeah, 4 into 1. Now, observe carefully, 4 into 1 means, once you multiply what we are expecting, plus 4, minus into minus plus 4. I to add what you are expecting, minus 5, we get it. Therefore, 4 can be written as so many factors, two, fact two forms of factors, 2 into 2, another 4 into 1. I choose for this because I go for 2 into 2, uh, add, the, so even though I have to take minus sign, minus into minus plus 4, we get. But add, we get minus 4. But, but once you add what we are expecting, minus, add or subtract, minus 1. Therefore, what we are going to take, two factors are 4 into 1. The choose suitable thing. Once you add, we get minus 5. And uh, uh, multiply, we get plus 4. It's satisfied. Therefore, m to the power of 4 minus 4m square. What is my x? Is m, m square. I told very clearly. And then minus m square plus 4 equal to 0. Group these two. Take common factor. What's a common factor? m square. m minus 4. See, this is one of the factor already here, m minus 4. Here, we don't have any common factor. But forcibly, we are taking minus sign outside. Why we are going to take minus sign outside? Once you take minus sign outside, both the factors must be same, m square minus 4. Therefore, what we did? We are forced, we are, group the last two terms, we are taken minus sign outside. It's not a common factor. That implies... Again, from this m square minus 4 is a common factor. What we get m square minus 1 is a, m square minus 1. That implies m square minus 4 equal to 0 and m square minus 1 equal to 0. Now, a plus b, you know that a square minus b square is nothing but a plus b into a minus b. Like that, we are going to write this is 4 can be written as 2 square. Okay m plus 2 into m minus 2 equal to 0. Yeah. And then this is nothing but 1 square. m plus 1 into m minus 1. That implies we get two factor. What is the, what are the roots we get? Minus 2 and then this is plus 2. This is uh, 1 minus 1. Once m plus 1 equal to 0. This is m is equal to 1. Totally we get four roots. 
all four roots are real and distinct you know how to write the complementary function what's a complementary function here c1 into e power of minus 2x because i taken my independent variable is x if c20 power of 2x c3 into e power of minus x and i am doing a little bit fast because you are already familiar and also pi is equal to 0 so what is my general solution general solution is what actually y equals only a cf yeah c1 into e power of minus 2x uh, plus uh, c2 into e power of uh, 2x c20 power of 2x plus c3 into e power of minus x plus c4 into e power of x yeah see why i solved this problem the thing beauty of this problem is even though it's a polynomial degree 4 not necessary to go for synthetic division method why because one is e1 power is there d power of 4 d square just i'm replacing x is equal to m square it's possible to factorize after the factorize also we get a e I, what i did a factorize into factor of 2 is a quadratic form m square minus 4 m square minus 1 is a factorize into polynomial degree 4 into factor of 2 two factors of degree 2 degree 2 then you know how to proceed then this is the easiest way. That's why these are the uh, tactics. These are the uh, thing. How can you know? That means you solve more number of problems. Then we are uh, then we are familiar. Once you look into the polynomial, we have to easily have to decide how to solve very easily with the uh, uh, limit uh, time constraint. How is possible to come out to the roots of the polynomial? That's a very very important. And then you remember all case A, B, C. D, all four cases, then e, A, B, C, D, then easy to write the uh, complementary function based on the roots of the polynomial. Finding the roots, you must be practice. I discuss all the types of, uh, what are the types uh, may be expecting in the problem, all types are covered, okay. In the next class, we are going to discuss the problem, uh, differential equation with higher derivatives with constant coefficients a non-homogeneous differential equation. Non-homogeneous differential equation means q of x is not equal to 0. Thank you very much. Bye. See you and take care. Again, you come back to my next class. Until then, take care.